Welcome, everyone. This is Stephen Warren. I'm the CTO of Data Center Dynamics, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today as we have our Carol webinar looking at humidity control and energy saving. Is there a solution? So, look, we all know that humidity control in the data center is considered necessary not only for electrostatic discharge prevention, but also for the general health of the facility itself and its equipment. However, using traditional technologies, you know, based on the principle of boiling water, is expensive in terms of energy, and also as it requires, you know, an increase in available power consumption is used. So in today's webinar, let me first give you an overview of what we're going to do. I'll first provide you with an overview of who our speakers are, who the subject matter experts are. We'll then take a look at that audience survey that you actually filled out during registration so you can see what everybody else was thinking and what they're up to. We'll then start with our first poll question. It's very short, very brief. Right after that, we'll begin taking a look at what the problem statement is in the industry right now. And then we'll take a look at a second poll question before we move into some of the solutions that are available. And then finally, we have a wonderful case study with Custodian Data Center before we move into our roundtable discussion. So first, let me introduce the wonderful subject matter experts who are actually joining us today for this. At first, I'd like to introduce Enrico. Enrico's been involved with Carroll Industries for the longest time as an application manager. He's really focused heavily on how we can, as an industry, identify the trends and the technology innovations, drive research and development, but a real focus on energy-efficient devices. And Enrique has been critical in our industry as he works with customers across the plane to assist them in humidity control and energy savings. Additionally, we have Stefano Ruzon. You know, a lot of us know Stefano across the industry. He has been involved with Carol for years. The man has been responsible for the definition and the coordination of how Carol has delivered their initiatives and also support all of its customers. As business unit manager, Stefano has been critical to how the cross-functional collaboration of different IT and facility and operational folks inside the data center space and manufacturing and mission critical work together. And last but not least, Roland, thank you so much for joining us. Roland Kinch is the CEO of Maidstone Studios. I'm sorry, he's the CEO of Custodian Data Center, and I wanted to actually mention he's also the CEO of Maidstone Studios. For those of us in North America and the U.K., we know it. Hey, Roland, I also wanted to say a special thank you for your work around the Soisambu Conservancy in the U.K. That charity has been instrumental and a key part of everything that we think of in terms of we as an industry have to be supportive of what we're doing. Now, before I forget, a couple of items. Number one, this webinar will be available for replay at any time after this. Additionally, you can join us throughout and afterwards at hashtag Carol Efficiency. Join in the conversation, get in your comments, get in your questions, and folks will feed back to you. At the same time, don't forget, you can also stick with DCD and our news by going to Twitter at DCDMag, and you can learn everything necessary. So why don't I actually start by taking a look at what you've all filled out when it comes to the registration and the audience survey. We can see right up front that... It's actually quite, uh, quite interesting for everyone and how you've answered. And I think the most important thing to take a look at is in what is your knowledge of adi adiabatic cooling? What is your knowledge around this area? It's pretty interesting. About 30% of you are already very, very, very well informed. You know, you can re you've already read about it. That's 40%. So people know what it is. What's most interesting is that in today's session, we'll actually be going deeper and deeper. So let's also take a look at the solution plans. Well, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty split. About 30% of you already have a solution in place, and another 30% of you are actually looking for things that are going on these days. What's more interesting in the solution plans is about 30% of you have none. That's interesting to see, and more importantly, this is really going to help you folks. So if we could, I'd like to actually move to the first poll. If we could start that up, I'd appreciate it. The first poll question is, what humidity control metric are you currently using in your data center? Are you using relative humidity? Are you using absolute humidity? Or at this point in time, you have none. You're not currently measuring anything at all. So if you could, please make your vote right now, and let's see how folks have voted on this. No one's voted right now, but could you please start voting if you're using free cooling or fresh air technologies, what type of humidity control 
do you employ? So let's take a look at this. What are you using? Let's take a quick look. We've already got some fantastic responses. If you're using free cooling or fresh air technologies, what type of humidity control do you employ? Adiabatic, up to 40%. There you go. About 20% is atomizer and or nebulizer. So let's get back to our discussion today and start things off. And I'd really like to begin with Enrico. So Enrico, could you start taking us through what's currently going out there in terms of humidity control? What are the challenges? What are the issues? And what's happening? So may I please welcome Enrico. Can you please give us an opportunity to take a look at what's happening in the industry right now? Thank you, Stephen, and thank you of all the attendees joining for this webinar. Um, traditionally, we know that data centers are including uh, humidity control in the design to reduce uh, electrostatic discharge risk. But everyone knows as well that this is energy consumption because, as you said before, it's performed using steam, which requires 750 watts for every kilogram per hour that is produced. Um, so it seems that this equation uh, cannot be solved. You cannot have both. And uh, in this very moment in which the whole industry is striving to reduce the energy consumption, this question is becoming more and more urgent. At the same time, we need to recognize we are on a changing scenario. The new ASHRAE guidelines uh, are trying to solve the equation by removing the humidity control. They are uh, showing us the study they conducted. They are showing us that low and extremely low values of humidity are actually not affecting the probability of uh, ESD. At the same time, I think this is a most valuable indication to show us where the limit of the design is, but what appears in the industry right now is that we might have a, a growing gap between the old and the new. As I was discussing recently during DCD in London with our friend Ian Bitterin, he said this is a growing gap, so we will have on one side the few innovative ones and on the other side all the rest of the world sticking to traditional design conditions and techniques for humidification. So not solving the equation, but still having humidity control and using uh, um, technologies wasting energy. That's why we uh, start, we decided to make this webinar because we recognize there is a lack of tools and examples to um, to go through this topic for all the different types of, of data center. And we are trying to see some examples today to, that you might recognize uh, to see some of the implication in the humidity control. So let's start with the legacy data center, traditional design and technology. This is a bank based in the UK. Uh, it's room-based uh, room control of temperature humidity with perimeter crack unit in a corridor. The room is at 25 degrees, 40 uh, percent, which is 77 Fahrenheit, and the uh, crack are delivering air at uh, 17 degrees, 62 Fahrenheit. These units are dehumidifying, so humidity control is considered uh, to uh, cope with the dehumidification. As we can see, the total cooling load is about 1.2 megawatt, and to compensate the dehumidification, there are uh, humidifiers providing steam for 135 kilograms per hour. That results in 100 kilowatts of consumption compared to approximately 400 kilowatts for cooling. So what is showing this first example? That there is a huge potential for uh, saving energy and the electrical power installed. So it's not only running costs, it's to have some more power that you could use. 
someone might uh, think this is old-fashioned. Truth is, we have a lot of data centers out there who might stick to the old design condition and uh, uh, technologies. So if they could find an energy-saving alternative now, they could save a lot of money and have a greener data center. The lack of tools and proper examples is uh, clearer for even for some recent design data center. The, the former um, envelope conditions suggested by the ASHRAE guidelines uh, can be used for uh, designing data center with higher temperatures. In this case, this is an enterprise data center based in Scandinavia, 100 kilowatts, design temperature 34 degrees in the um, contained hot aisle, and then the whole room is a, is a cold aisle at 24 degrees. Design humidity is 32, and the water uh, for the air conditioner is 15 degrees. So virtually, this is not performing the humidification. The old criteria used for a dimension in that um, uh, doesn't work any longer, so you shouldn't have a humidity issue. Actually, what is measured is 24% to 14.5% relative humidity, and the famous 8% in the hot aisle. What does this mean? Now we have new scenarios. We need new tools, new tools for dimensioning, looking at the data center, not at the unit level, but in the global perspective. So that data center, if you look at it, Basically, it's 200 cubic meter. Looking at the moisture content, and this is the approach we are suggesting for recirculation data center, the content is actually, if you compare minimum to uh, design condition, is 0 0.6 compared to 0 0.9 kilograms. A traditional design would have required 18, kil based on the cooling power, would have required 18 kilograms per hour humidifiers, Actually, the total content of that is less than a kilo. So one way of having energy saving is probably we need a correct size for the humidifiers using, using the total moisture content. You see that in using, for example, 14 40, 4 kilograms per hour humidifiers, uh, which is one-fourth of what a traditional design will require, you should bring the content, the total moisture content between minimum to maximum in 15 minutes. This different way of dimensioning uh, humidifiers uh, is uh, quite clear also in the next examples we are going to see. This is uh, a new data center. Many new data centers are made like that because they are including uh, direct free cooling. Humidification is kept into account because there is an air handling unit introducing fresh air and mixing it with the recirculated air. So there is partial exhaust air and the mix to deliver uh, the air at the correct set point of temperature and humidity too. Why? Um, that's why one of the poll questions was, uh, are you measuring uh, relative or absolute humidity? Actually, the relative humidity of ambient air during winter time is high, but uh, the real moisture content is very low. In London Gatwick, there are a few hours in, during which ambient air is even lower than the suggested new uh, recommended uh, uh, humidity by ASHRAE. So we might have an issue, and everyone who's considering fresh air is keeping into account humidification, as the humidification load might easily be two, three times compared to what uh, you are normally um, taking into account in a traditional data center, they are already using uh, energy saving techniques for humidification. By the way, these techniques have a side effect. They are also performing cooling. So what are these techniques they are using? Well, it's the adiabatics. Adiabatic 
um, humidifiers uh, uh, about which we we are going to make a, um, and you had a poll question. The abiotic humidifier is a technique for adding moisture to air by put by means of putting in contact air and water. So the evaporation of the air is performed uh, using the heat of the surrounding air. The end result is a cooling effect. So one kilogram per hour that is evaporating is creating a cooling effect of 0.6, 0.7 kilowatts. In the end, you are turning a problem into an opportunity. So the most valuable indication from ASHRAE might become for us uh, um, a real opportunity of looking into the way we are controlling humidity and why not to apply adiabatic technologies even to all the different kind of tap centers. If we could use that, we could have a humidity control and still avoid wasting energy. That might solve the equation, probably. What do you think about that, Stephen? I, I totally agree, and, and, and Enrique, this is this is critical what you've brought up. It's truly understanding the entire envelope you're working with, and understanding that humidity control can actually yield greater benefits. And we're not just talking about cost control. We're not just talking about energy efficiency. There's so much more that you mentioned. I, I think at this point in time, it's probably a good idea for us to move to poll question number two, so that way we can start moving forward with Stefano to take a look at what are some of the solutions that are out there. So at this time, I'd actually like to launch poll number two, if we could. And that poll question is, using free cooling or fresh air technologies, what type of humidity control do you employ? Do you employ adiabatic, atomizer, and or nebulizer? Do you, do you, do you utilize steam? Number four, wetted media. And finally, number five, none of the above. So if you could, please vote now. Appreciate it. Get your votes in, and we'll take a look at those. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, uh, we've actually changed the poll question. I apologize. What humidity control are you using currently in your data center? And right now it's up to relative humidity at 79, adiabatic at 7, and not sure at 14. I do apologize for that, my mistake. So, very interesting uh, um, look at it. Stefano, I'd like to turn things over to you now. Can we really take a look at this question around what solutions are available and what type of technologies can be used to really move on forward from what Enrico was talking about? So, I'd like to turn it over to you, Stefano. Thank you for joining us, and please give us some insight. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, why don't we start uh, with the differences as far as process is concerned between the steam and the adiabatic humidification. So, first of all, um, the steam humidification is, I would say, the traditionally one being used in data center, and the main technology is probably the immersed electrode one. And basically, this unit is installed inside the closed control unit. Um, this technology to add moisture to the air is uh, extremely energy um, uh, consumption because for every kilogram of water that we want to add in the air, we need about 750 watts. Basically, this is uh, the this cost made uh, during the years uh, the humidification less uh, attractive, I would say. So. On the other hand, if we move on the right side of the slide, we see the adiabatic process. And basically, this could be the solution of the equation mentioned by Enrico, because as we can, as we can see, uh, the adiabatic process implies a double effect. First of all, we increase the moisture content of the air, and uh, during the same time, we have a temperature drop of the airflow. And as we will see in the next slides, this temperature drop is due to the spontaneous water evaporation. So basically, in a nutshell, we are not uh, adding to the water the energy 
that uh, it needs for the evaporation. The water, after the nebulization, absorbs this energy from the airstream. So let's see, the, being back on the example that Enrico made with the first uh, layout, this is a data center that is using um, outside air to keep the temperature under control. Um, obviously, um, introducing outside air during winter time, we will have uh, um, the relative humidity drop inside the server room, and it can be easily go it, it can go easily below the threshold of the EDS risk, as Enrico explained. So let's see. According to this uh, scenario, which technology fits uh, the, the purpose of uh, humidification? Um, I would say that the main one is the high-pressure water atomizer because, uh, as we can see from the picture on the right side of the screen, we have a distribution system that is going to add moisture, moisture I would say, is going to atomize water in the airstream. And during this path, we'll have a, um, a water evaporation. So we have a, a double effect. The relative humidity increases, and the airstream is cooled down. Thanks to this cooling effect, on this specific layout, we can actually limit the amount of outside air that we need to keep the temperature under control, so that we are going to uh, introduce another energy saving aspect, reducing the filter filtration cost related to the outside air. The, just to have a, a quick look on the technology behind the high pressure water atomizer, so basically, as you can see on the left side of the screen, it consists on a high pressure uh, pump uh, that is fitted with reverse osmosis water, so demineralized water that makes the distribution system basically maintenance free. Uh, this, uh, uh, the water pressure rises up to 70 bar and it is distributed uh, through special atomization nozzles in the airstream, I would say in the humidification section of the air and the unit. During the path between the nozzle and the mist eliminator, we have the evaporation. Um, as you can see from the, uh, from the picture, thanks to the modulation, the uh, precision that we can get is uh, up to 1% of RH accuracy. And this is reached thanks to the frequency variator and the staging selection of the distribution system. The second scenario, scenario that we saw with uh, uh, Enrico is uh, the uh, data center that is actually using 100% of recirculated air with uh, crack unit, crack uh, uh, mechanical cooling. So in this case, uh, the humidity load uh, quote from the mechanical cooling, let's say, is negligible, especially uh, with the new technology but uh, the humidification process, we will have to compensate the effect of the air infiltration. So for this layout, the best solution for the humidity control is an inside room humidification. And uh, for this such a critical purpose, because actually we are, the, the aim is humidified directly inside the server room, the ultrasonic humidification is probably the best one because due to its own working principles, so the ultrasonic, uh, ultrasound technology, the, this technology actually produces uh, extremely small droplets, up to or one micron. And this makes the absorption in the air extremely rapid and safe. So just to recap, we have a distribution of uh, what we call, we can say as a mist fat in the air surrounding, and uh, with the double effect of uh, humidifying and cooling the airflow, the air around the unit. So, uh, rather than providing energy 
to the, the water for the evaporation as it currently happens uh, with the immersed electrode technology, we basically utilize, we use, and I would say we absorb part of the uh, um, sensible load inside the server room to uh, have the water evaporation with a double effect, actually. We control the humidity in an extremely precise way and we cool down the airflow. So due to this, uh, the power consumption of the ultrasonic technology is actually about only the 10% if compared with the steam technology. So this makes the ultrasonic humidification an ideal solution for retrofit of existing units in data center. And the typical return of the investment, thanks to the evaporative cooling effect, is typically around one year. Stefano, that, 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 I have to say, any, anything else to put on to that? I mean, that's powerful information. So I, I'd, I'd like to say just absolutely wonderful, that last part, even taking a look at legacy players that have an opportunity. Only 10% of power consumption compared to steam humidifiers. That's just incredible right up front. It, it just, it just it amazes me. We've got this fantastic opportunity with ASHRAE that they've offered to us with the envelopes. And as you've mentioned, even within those, we have tremendous opportunities around technologies and solutions to drive energy efficiency, cost savings, and delivery. I, I think it's really time for us to start taking a look at a case study. And I'd like to turn things over to Roland. Roland, I do apologize for mentioning Maidstone Studios also, but you've got a lot of things that you have done in our industry. There are a lot of things the custodian right, has really gone Thank out there for. <laughs> so, Roland, could you please, could you talk, take a look at what you've done at custodian? We'd really appreciate some insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about uh, custodian. So, um, custodian is a relatively new player in the DC space having been around now for six years. Um, our main offering is really a range of traditional sort of colo and private suites coupled to uh, quite a large IP transit network that we operate to administer. Um, we've always considered ourselves a design-led solution. We entered originally into the DC market space, utilizing fresh air technology, the DX back end, Closed loop made no sense to us at all. Okay, this obviously gave us the opportunity to control humidity at the top end, but certainly in our first year we definitely struggled in the winter months with low end ambient and RH numbers and the potential ESD issues that that pursue with that. This led to us deploying relatively inefficient direct injection techniques help the situation during those times. Um, so when it came time to expand our current floor offerings, uh, we naturally wanted to look at all of the cooling, the other cooling and uh, humidity control offerings that were on the market. Um, from the various manufacturers that were, that were offering solutions across the, uh, the range of wetted media, adiabatic, DX, etc., Certainly, we discounted the wetted media option pretty quickly um, as I just couldn't gain the top end system efficiencies control that we needed. DX was obviously uh, always in there as an option, but um, looking further into the ROI value proposition, Adiabatic not only solved the cooling and humidification issues, it also gave back, we looked at it seriously, it gave us back 30 to 40% the mechanical cooling electrical transformer innovation required the DX cooling. So it's a massive consideration for, for any player that's uh, got transformer space and, and it really is considered a, a liquid gold entity you know, when you're in this game. Um, obviously this is a major consideration for project justification um, and when looking at the entire project feasibility um, obviously, I need to ensure that we're ticking all of the design boxes whilst we're doing that. Um, so, to ensure that we got this design decision right, we agreed to partner with Corel in a trial on one new floor. 
um, so that we fully understood how to deploy and control adiabatic technology in our environment. And this has proven to be a, a great success. So um, our new facility opening in March um, will be offering 12 new rooms um, using four Corel Humifog units in a direct adiabatic setup. Um, this way we've been able to factor in redundancy for cooling, humidity and air volume. Um, and it, it's generally this has been so successful for us that we're now planning on retrofitting Humifog into our original DX floor um, to gain all of the advantages that I've already listed. Um, certainly from a CEO's point of view, this solution ticks all of the project boxes. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a, a great success. So I, I think that's a, a, a brief overview of us and I'll, I'll hand you back to Stephen with that. Well, thank you very much, Roland. I, I'm actually gonna throw the first question out to you, but I, is it time for me to actually say that really cheeky expression, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. I mean, it's interesting how you put that. And the staggering numbers, Roland, how just going with the right design decision and going through that process yielded a 30 to 40 percent savings just in the UPS side of things. That's a stunning how the right design decisions. Can, can I jump to another side with you, Roland? I'd like to throw the first roundtable question to you, if I might. Sure. And, and that is... You're dealing with a tremendous number of customers in a co-location environment, everything from static load requirements all the way up to cloud burstable on-demand customers, Roland. i got to ask, how can you as an operator, a data center operator, deal with all those types of colo customers? Do you have to educate them? Do you have to work with them? Do they even know what their cooling load requirements are? How do you deal with that, Roland? That's something that a lot of people need to understand. Well, I think again, from a, an operational point of view, again, we consider ourselves an informed operator, and for sure, I never underestimate my customers' intelligence, <laughs> their ability to, to be informed around a subject, and I'd much rather be in front of that curve than behind it. And I like to sleep at night, so, you know, I don't need customers talking to me about low humidity environments, failures on cards, or the lightning bolts coming off of, uh, off of rack environments. So across the range of, of, of you know, diverse power offerings, diverse uh, cooling offerings, uh, ensuring that we've got our air volumes correct, because that's another major factor that quite a few people seem to overlook but um, humidity control has to be for us a box that we need to tick, um, as I say, because I don't want to be looking people square in the face trying to apologize for fairly expensive potential component failures, potentially due to ESD. So, yeah, we, we want to be in front of that curve, not behind it. That that's fantastic. I mean, that's that's exactly where you need to be with your customers. Very interesting also for you to talk about their own capacity requirements, the client's own issues around volume. Um, you know, Stefano, can, can I actually throw the same question to you? You deal with a lot of customers. You, you spend a tremendous amount of time in legacy data centers, a tremendous amount of time in colo facilities and service providers and telcos. Stefano, can you please talk to us about how you're hearing things? What are you hearing from the data center operators? What are you hearing from the likes of even the co-location customers and operators? Um, basically, the need to combine the relative humidity control and the um, energy uh, saving aspect uh, is leading to two different scenarios, I would say. The traditional, let's say, a more conservative uh, data center that still uh, utilize 100% uh, of a recirculated, water, uh, recirculated uh, air uh, that this solution that is, uh, I would say, extremely safe and at the same time extremely conservative uh, leads to, it's a little, it is a little bit more uh, oriented for uh, the ultrasonic technology because of the small load and the combination of uh, humidity control and, uh, uh, and the 
reverse, uh, relative humidity control. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when uh, the uh, data center uh, management is open, and this has to happen during the design phase, obviously, uh, when the consultant, let's say, is open f uh, to the outside air usage, um, this, let's say, gives us the opportunity to uh, be a little bit more proactive in providing a solution that has uh, the double purpose as usual, I would say, so relative humidity control and evaporative cooling, but uh, we can be, in this case, a real complementary uh, device uh, that is going to support the mechanical cooling, especially in what it, uh, we need it the most, so during the peaks, uh, the days of the temperature peaks. So this is, in a nutshell, what I can say we uh, we saw in the last few years as far as uh, application. Oh, that, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, one of the things that I read in the beautiful book around, uh, one of the e-books, the beautiful book around evaporative cooling, was that humidity, control of humidity is not an art. There's a science now. The research and development has been done that. And I want to throw this out to you now, Enrico. You spend a tremendous amount of time in research and development, working on the technologies for the customers, for the industry. Enrico, same question to you. How are you dealing with, what are you hearing from customers now in their needs? How are you dealing with these customers who have this tremendous demand for, let's, let's call it on-demand, on-demand power cooling, on-demand power cooling humidity as they're in the burstable space of the cloud environment. So, Enrico, how are you dealing with customers? What are you hearing from them about issues and challenges and, and what they need? Okay, thanks, uh, Stephen. I think um, as regards the humidity control, more and more there are doubts, and that's why the whole East industry should investigate more, uh, learn more, find new solutions. And as we say often, it will be horses courses. We, we, we won't be able to find one only solution for humidity control, but we need to find the right solution for that specific data center studying weather conditions, temperature, and humidity, measuring absolute humidity. And moreover, I would like to point out another thing. We always talk during this webinar about humidity control, which is not simply adding moisture to the air. It's controlling the humidity, playing with the envelope, understand where you can push the limit and control it to perform also the cooling effect that comes from the adiabatic technologies. And, and this is the good part. So you can do that without a proper modulating technology. Everything is going modulating now, fans, air flows. You cannot afford to have uh, an on-off technology for humidification. Uh, you're absolutely correct. And look at one of the points that Stefano brought up, the fact that you can actually get within 1% Accuracy for relative humidity if you do that monitoring properly. So, Stefano, it's your turn now. I need to, to, we had a question that came up from the audience, and that was, what do you do about clogged nozzles? But at the same time, I'd like to ask you, you know, if somebody has a question like that, they're also asking, what's the selection process? How do I make a selection process around adiabatic technologies? And as Roland mentioned, he, they worked with you on the design process for the new hall. And then as they saw what the necessary requirements were, they went back with those technology solutions to the previous halls that they had to, be, to enable those to be much more responsive in this area. So two questions to you, Stefano, to open up. Number one, what do you do about clog nozzles? And number two, what What's the selection process about whether I'm going to go with something like Humifog or whether I'm going to be going with nebulizers or atomizers? Can you, can you talk us through that, please? Sure, sure, sure Stephen. Um, first of all, for a such mission-critical application as the data center, um, we consider mandatory the uh, reverse osmosis order for the humidification and evaporative cooling process. And this is uh, uh, the same, both the technologies, high pressure atomizers and the uh, ultrasonic technologies. Um, utilizing uh, reverse osmosis water, um, let's say you can see this as an additional cost because obviously uh, there is an efficiency between uh, the 
uh, demineralization of the water. But if we uh, consider uh, the big picture, so the investment cost and the operative cost, uh, with a humidification system, let's consider a high pressure water atomizer with uh, extremely small atomization nozzles. Uh, this device that operates with the demineralized water it is basically a maintenance free device. And for a such a mission critical uh, application as, as the data center, this is a massive added value. So we don't need to turn down the airflow inside the air and the unit, clean the humidification section, or to unclog the nozzles. Because with the demineralized water, this does not happen. And this is uh, uh, about the question number one. Then uh, about the question number two, so the selection between the two technologies and the proper sizing of uh, the humidifiers. Um, basically, we can uh, see this uh, in, in two ways. The, the main thing that is going to, the main parameter that is going to uh, orient the choice between uh, high pressure water atomizer and the ultrasonic technology is the actual humidity load. Because uh, uh, just to give you um, a real number, if the humidity load is between, is uh, below, let's say, uh, 50 kilogram per hour, for argument's sake, um, we can consider this uh, uh, the uh, best uh, um, scenario for the ultrasonic technology. So referring to the data center layout is the one that typically works or operates with 100% uh, recirculated water. On the other hand, uh, when the design is open to the utilization of uh, the outside air, uh, in this case, the humidification load to compensate uh, the, uh, the effect of the outside air can be so about uh, 200 kilograms per hour and up to maybe one or 2,000. This is going to be up to the size of the data center, actually. So as far as technologies, they both uh, uh, offer, say, the same level of performances as far as uh, precision and energy saving. So the choice uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be driven by the humidity load uh, amount. Thank you very much. I uh, really do appreciate it. You know, one thing that I'd like to actually talk about is, uh, Enrica, would you like to talk about this in terms of the technology selection process? So, Enrico, would you like to talk about the technology solution process at this point, too, also? Would you like to, to also add on to what Stefano was talking about? I mean, I think he, he was covering pretty much that. And it, as, as we always say, it, it's a matter of uh, total cost of ownership. That's it. Um, for the selection of one technology or even um, uh, to consider um, – whether we need to have water treatment or not. It's a maintenance cost. It's to have something that is um, continuously operating and to avoid to have dust inside the data center. We, we, if you have some minerals inside the data center, you might have dust. This is creating a layer over the boards, increasing thermal resistance and so in increasing the, the cost of, of cooling. So um, you need to look at the total cost uh, of ownership for any solution. Uh, it's a perfect point. Roland, can I just ask you this also? You mentioned it when you talked about the design selection process and working with Carol. Can I just ask you, Roland, how important was it for you to be working with Carol Industries at the time when you're going through the selection process because it sounds like you truly did walk through multiple variations and multiple opportunities or technologies. How important it is to have that that vendor that partner in Carol with you? Well, you can imagine when you uh, stray away for, or consider straying away from a DX back end. That's what you've known for years. Um, 
and the you know you physically you look at a big chiller, <laughs> multiple chillers, uh, big uh, um, cooling mains, pumps, etc. And this boils back down to, if you excuse the pun, um, relatively small humifog, wonderfully made boxes. Um, and some spray rails that are effectively invisible because they disappear off into the uh, into the air handling unit. Um, and especially, you know, you, you, we've worked with our own uh, um, style of, of um, air movement. We know our, our our air speeds. We know how our plenums work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, ensuring that we get nice temperature temperature gradients. Um, it, it's a big consideration, and I needed some serious confidence. And as I say, we looked across the range of wetted media, um, and it just didn't react quick enough. I couldn't get um, uh, any confidence around um, the, the worst days in the year. Um, and as I say, adding back that amount of transformer reservation that's just then not required for a big DX back end uh, maximum load use, um, it left me convinced that, that adiabatic was the right way to go. And to be perfectly honest, I wanted to look for one of the top, the top manufacturer that I could work with. Um, I was welcome with open arms at Corel. They made me feel extremely comfortable. They were more than happy to come out and trial this system uh, with me. Um, and as an operator, I got a lot of creature comforts from um, the, their technical departments, um, visiting the factory, going through the processes here, um, because that's what you're left with. You know, you, you have to have confidence in um, the cooling that you're going to provide your customers, because if you can't cool it, it's going off. That is your, that's the business we're in, to be, up, to be there, to be on, for our customers to be up. So I needed confidence. And, and custodians got that 100%, you know, uptime. Uh, boy, thank you so much. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. C considering in the industry, although you've only been around for six years, you even took a look at your own facility almost like it was a legacy because of the legacy equipment and the design and how you needed to move forward. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Roland. Um, no problem. Stefano, I, I, I'm going to jump back. We've got a question that came up from the community, and that's, how can we really look at that? You know, is it possible with changing the pressure in the water nozzles to be able to control that humidity? Am I able to set a point? Am I able to get within that 1% as you spoke about of that relative humidity? So how can we work with this? And, and you can see that question right up front. You know, for example, this person is looking at a potential of an overheat, and then they want to have humidity. How are they going to be able to do that, and how can they stop at a certain point? Can you talk about that just a little bit? Sure, Stephen. Um, basically, um, our, the modulation of uh, our high-pressure water atomizer happens thanks to a uh, double effect. Um, the first one is uh, uh, due to the frequency variator that is going to control the speed, so the RPM of the uh, high pressure pump. And this is the, the, the first uh, modulation of the actual water flow. Uh, then the distribution system is every manifold that has uh, several nozzles, and this is up to the, the load basically, is controlled by a solenoid valve. So it's not going to be a, a on-off system. Um, the humifog and the high-pressure water atomizer has the capability to perfectly match the required capacity as far as relative humidity. So uh, the answer is yes, we can uh, stop uh, the humidification process wherever uh, is necessary according to their request. Uh, obviously, the humidifier has to be properly uh, sized, properly dimensioned, and uh, we have uh, basically to be a little bit more technical because I see that the question is uh, extremely precise. Uh, we have two ways to uh, add another modulation uh, uh, control is due to the pressure variation and or the staging. Um, I can't see one that is better than the other. It's just the, the application and the humidity load. 
in both cases, uh, we can uh, reach um, an extremely high accuracy, let's say up to plus or minus 1%. Um, it's just a matter of choice, of a design choice. Uh, you can do both. Oh, it's a critical point. Can I also ask you at the same time, you know, you talked about the fact that you, you will have, there are no problems with nozzles clogging, but one of the questions that came up is what features do you need to have for water in an adiabatic system? Uh, does it need special treatment? Do you need to have a special containers? Is there an extra cost here that's required? I think people are just concerned about, you know, if we're talking about total cost of ownership and return on investment, the solutions that you've offered are absolutely fantastic in every single way, but are there special systems that need to be put in place? Um, yeah, there is an, um, a device uh, uh, that is going to be that we have to consider on the total cost of ownership, and this device is a reverse osmosis system. And uh, basically, in few words, uh, this is uh, a device that is going through uh, is going to uh, remove the mineral salts from the water in order to uh, for the humidifier to atomize only pure water and avoiding lime scale deposition. And as I said, since uh, um, at the end of the day we need to utilize water to humidify the air, uh, if we consider the whole process, uh, it's much better to add the upfront cost of the reverse osmosis system and uh, avoiding maintenance inside the air and the unit uh, rather than having uh, with the tap water the lime scale deposition inside the humidification section. And on top of that, as uh, Enrico was saying, um, with uh, reverse osmosis water, we basically remove of the mineral salt so that we don't have dust dispersed inside the data center, and this is absolutely a crucial point. Um, the very last one about the water quality is the hygienic aspect. Uh, reverse osmosis water is for sure uh, uh, um, a, a good solution also to guarantee the hygiene of the adiabatic solution. Oh, absolutely perfect, and as you know, Stefano, more and more companies around the world are dealing with water issues, and it is critical. Um, we're, we're, we're really running out of time here, guys. I want to get to another question that came up through the entire survey and registration process for everyone joining us, and that is, what about legacy customers? You know, Roland talked about his own facility, six years old, one of the finest. I mean, Green Data Center Award for Energy Efficiency, ISO certified, one of the best out there in the U.K. just for cloud alone. But what about people who are dealing with even older facilities? What's out there? Enrico, I want to throw this one to you. You spend a tremendous amount of time with the customers, tremendous amount of time in these facilities. What about legacy customers? What can be done? Yeah, uh, I think that as we said in the beginning, uh, we don't want to uh, let this gap become uh, bigger and bigger. We need to fill that gap working with uh, examples, um, uh, studying more, providing examples of design, even for refurbishment of that center. There are many outside there with some energy efficiency measurements measures, uh, we could improve the PUE and, uh, and the energy consumption of many data centers. So the suggestion is first measure uh, your current uh, absolute humidity inside data center and see how it is the real day humidification. Then you might want to consider some form of containment and at the same time raising the temperature, you reduce the day humidification. You might be able to use an adiabatic technology. Don't let the adiabatic only for the new design data center and fresh air. It's feasible even for recirculation because the humidification might be transitory. So you can use that. You can save a tremendous amount of, of money in running costs. Moreover, as um, Roland was pointing out, uh, you've seen that example. 20% of the total power installed for cooling uh, 
was uh, installed for humidifiers, and that is not the worst case. So it's not only running costs, uh, it's uh, reducing the installed power that might result uh, in more opportunity for installing new racks uh, and using uh, your white space at best. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I mean, great point. The, the, the a tremendous amount of money that's already been put into this equipment for the design of the facility and its operation. Uh, Stefano, would you like to respond to that at all? I know that you've spent a tremendous amount of time recently with a lot of legacy players, especially in the telco and manufacturing space and, and, and financial services. Any thoughts on the questions that are coming up from your customers and what you're hearing? Um, sorry, Stephen, I have to ask you to repeat, please, because I've lost the last, uh, I would say, 10 seconds. Sure, I apologize. So, so, Stefano, you've spent a tremendous amount of time in legacy facilities across the range of manufacturing, financial services, telco, service providers. What are you hearing in terms of the concerns from legacy players about moving towards better humidity control and solutions? Yeah, as uh, uh, I would refer to uh, what uh, uh, Roland said a few minutes ago, um, it's not just uh, um, pushing the uh, relative humidity, uh, let's say, on the on the limit, or avoiding the relative humidity at all that is going to, I would say, change your life. Uh, sometimes you want to be a little bit more safe. And why do I need uh, to push the relative humidity down just to, I would say, save uh, an amount of money that if we can do that on the adiabatic way, it's, uh, I would say, way less than in the past. So rather than keeping, I would say, 8 or 10% of relative humidity, I see that many times the discussion is moving on, okay, let's keep uh, it uh, above 35% and this way we'll have uh, our data center on a safer side, especially for the uh, co-location uh, um, uh, scenario. This is crucial. Um, thank you. Uh, Roland, I'm going to throw the last question out to you for final thoughts and processes as our operator. Um, are there any final thoughts that you'd like to give out to the community? I mean, you're the person at the front line every day. So any thoughts that you'd like to give out to the, to the community? Really just consider your customers. Just um, where I was sat, the, you know, I, I, I really didn't feel comfortable without the confidence of a major European manufacturer behind me. Um, if this thing didn't work, okay, I had the, the luxury of a semi-test environment to try it out, get to learn how the thing actually performs. But I, I just absolutely had the confidence, major manufacturer, with all the assurances they gave me, this thing worked, they could back it up, they had all the spares in stock. Sure enough, you know, the RO plant, massively impressive. I, I didn't want to take any risk around quality, you say clogging of no nozzles, clogging of uh, droplet separators needed to be a top end solution. So that's uh, only where my heart was. I, I have to tell you, Roland, I mean, it's the perfect words. You didn't want to play with your customers. You didn't want to endanger your business, your customers, their, their own businesses, and you did not want to have to have that risk on top of you and be with the right partner. So what I'd like to do now as we end the last minute is just to thank everyone. Roland, thank you. Stefano and Enrico, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to tell everyone, if you've got any questions, please reach out to them directly. Uh, please note that this webinar is on demand. If you do want the slide deck, please reach out to Enrico. Um, he'll be able to work with you. And I did mention those two e-books. I'm going to remind you all again today that you have an opportunity to download them. Uh, there's the Evaporative Cooling e-book as well as the Air Humidification e-book. Both of them are absolutely fantastic. I was telling the guys uh, that I just finished uh, the air humidification one just about a day ago, and it was really enjoyable. The, the, the amount of information is just fantastic. So please uh, go out, take a look at all the incredible information that Carol has available. Please take a look at Custodian DC for all of your data center needs. And more importantly, 
Don't forget to follow Carol at e at uh, hashtag Carol Efficiency for all your questions and all your needs. Additionally, don't forget to follow us on DCD News for all your latest information. So, again, Enrico, Stefano, and Roland, thank you so much for your time today and for all the tremendous input. And to everyone who joined us today, again, thank you. And don't forget to provide a bit of a rating for how we did today and whether you enjoyed it and it was informative. So to everyone, thank you and have a wonderful day.